All right, so there it is. Check it out. What do y'all think? Candy blue. I just gotta put the. I just gotta mount the compressors. That's it. Put four little screws in each one, and we're good to go. Then wire it up. All right, so this is the primer that I've been using, the 2K primer. Uh, Finish One makes some pretty decent products. It's, it's great. Uh, it's not the best, best product out there, but you'd be really hard pressed to beat it, honestly. I've had good results over the last one years. So, you like to kind of stir stuff up. You know. Where I buy my paints, you know, a lot of people use like a whole mixing system where these will just sit on a rack, but as a as a small guy, you know, you don't really, I don't have room in my garage for a full rack. So anyway, this is the FP410. It's a 2K high build primer. It's uh, it's four to one. Are you so let's stir it up. Normally I wait in my neighborhood till 10 o'clock to do something, but I'm supposed to meet my buddies for lunch at noon. So I kind of want to get this tank painted and clear coated before I go. So that way later on tonight, I can kind of start assembling it over the weekend. I can have this whole thing completely assembled. That's my goal for this weekend. Even though it should have only, it would have only taken about an hour or two if I wasn't painting the tank. But I just feel like even though it's not being seen, I think it's great for y'all to see how to do it. And it also make a, just kind of a better finalized product. So there we go. Primer's all mixed up. Let's go spray it. So this is 400 grit, and if you, when you're sanding it, you can see the texture. You can see it right there. What you want to do is you want to sand it nice and smooth because my my paint is essentially a candy paint. So each layer creates more texture. So you want to make sure that what you're spraying down on the first level is as smooth as you can get it, essentially. For me, I found that 400 grit is is more than sufficient for that. You can always go finer if you wanted to. Uh, my paint reps always told me never to go more than like six or 800 grit because then you have too slick of a surface. It's like you're painting on just clear coat, you know, a polished clear coat. So your paint sticks to your, to the different layers from a chemical adhesion, which are the hardeners and the reducers and all that kind of stuff that kind of help make well, reducers kind of thin it out, but the hardeners make it kind of melt into the other layers, essentially, in a kind of simplified way. So, and then you have mechanical adhesion, which are the, the sand marks. So that's why you sand a bumper before you paint it. You know, you scuff it with like a 400 grit or something like that. And so 400 grit with a base coat, clear coat, uh, urethane based paint, you know, all the modern paints, not waterborne 400 is uh, you don't see the sand scratch. Anything less than 400, like 320 or something, you're gonna see the sand scratches. But for me, with Sherwin-Williams Ultra 7000, it, you don't see any of the sand scratch. You can always do more work, right? And, and, and you're gonna hear me say that all the time. I, I know, I sound like a broken record. There's always more you can do to a vehicle. There's always more, you know, there's just, there's never an end. It's like, okay, this is, this is how much I wanted to do to it, you know? And as you sand, you'll see different textures, you'll see different things, and you want it to be nice and smooth as possible. And if you get a little run in the primer, which I don't really care about runs in primer, I'm not really concerned because I can sand them out, you know? You don't want to get runs in your base coat, because that you will have to sand out, and then you will have to respray, and it complicates everything. But so, and if you see right there, you can see the texture kind of where I, I started to sand it, and then I realized like, hey, I should be recording. So. Anyway, that's what you want to do. You want to sand out all that texture. If you notice, as I sand it, it goes away a little bit. And it's kind of the same thing as a guide coat, but a good epoxy primer or a good, not necessarily epoxy primer, but a good high build primer is going to show all those things. You know, it's going to show like, hey, this is too high. This is too low type of deal. Even though this down here is getting covered with the valves, you're not even going to see any of this really, any kind of clarity. You'd have to be looking in. Now, mind you, all of this is going to be hidden behind a panel even. So it's not even like you're going to see this. I I may leave it open. I don't know. But my plans are to just have like basically like a square opening in my trunk and this airbag and all this kind of stuff. Be I don't really plan to 
as it, when you open the trunk, I don't plan for you to see this kind of stuff. So it's just one way you can kind of make your car a little bit nicer, you know, by going and doing a little bit more to it instead of just putting the, the black tank that comes and you can get it powder coated, that's another option. But for me, I, I wanna, I'm a painter, so I see everything needs to be painted. So the front of that looks really nice now. I'm not sure how much of the video is catching this up. I'm sure I'll see when I go to edit the videos, but yeah, that's, that feels nice. There's a little bit of a, a little bit right there. I'm gonna need to sand down. You could always use a sanding block to do this if you wanted to make it perfectly straight and all that stuff. But in order for things to be straight and be able to see that they're straight, you have to be able to reference them to something else. So if you can't reference it to anything else, you don't really know how straight something is. It's like when a door is open, you don't know if it's in line with the rest of the car. But when you put it back on the car, then you're like, oh, that's gotta be straight. Anyway, here we go with that. Now the ends we're gonna sand on the outside. We'll make it all nice and kind of smooth again. This this primer is built specifically to build high high build and and uh, then sand down to be nice and smooth. You could thin it out a little bit more if you if they allowed reducer in it, but they don't really. Now my epoxy primer you can, but this you can't. And this is just 400 grit, and you can tell it just stopped sanding. Uh, that's when you know to kind of move the disc around, run your hand across it. You can feel it. When I'm working in my shop, I like to throw all of my sandpaper on the ground so I know that it's bad. So this is eight ounces of, of mixed paint. This has a lot of pearl in it. So you wanna make sure that you either stir it up or shake it up. Cause you don't wanna have base coat without your pearl all mixed in because then some of it's gonna be not so sparkly. And then some of it's gonna be super duper sparkly. You can spray just the, the, just the, uh, the ground coat probably. And it's a pretty amazing blue in, in itself. I mean, it's real, I mean, to me, just the ground coat that I came up with is probably the hottest looking blue, but the candy layer is what really kind of sets it apart. And I think you're going to see that in the final product. It's overcast today here in Florida, central Florida area. So, you know, it's like, so I'll spray it today. So I always strain everything. It's just a good habit to get into. According to the EPA, you can spray uh, three cars for yourself each year and not follow EPA regulations. Uh, otherwise, you do have to follow EPA, and I strongly believe in that. But I only spray, you know, uh, one car every couple of years. So it's like, I'm definitely well within the, the legal uh, aspect of painting. Because a lot of people are curious about that. Can you spray legally? And I don't know about your local laws or your, your neighborhood laws, or whatever you know your state laws your city laws whatever so so the one thing that i will say is that you want to have a certain consistency in, in your in, in when you're spraying like a base coat clear coat it's not as critical to being the right consistency you know i can spray it thick or thin and still come up with a pretty nice product but when it comes to candies you really want it nice and thin because you want it to try to you want to try to make it lay as smooth as possible it's just it's just so much better of a product, you know, because you don't want to, if you put it on thick with regular, you know, then you're going to have a texture and then your candy layer, you know, you're putting two candy layers, which are going to be even more texture. So you'll see that down the road. So you want to, I know that I keep saying that, but you really want to try to get each layer as smooth as possible. So this is like not quite the consistency of water. It's thinner than what I would normally spray, but and right now I probably have uh, 12 ounces of mixed material. So uh, that's about six ounces of, you know, five or six ounces of actual paint itself. And then the other part's reducer. So you know, just so in case you're wondering like, well, I don't know how much paint he's using. That's pretty much exactly how much paint. Normally you would use a lot less uh, mid coat than you would ground coat. Mid coat is the candy part. 
but with uh, with this one I'm using two coats of the candy so in order to do that I have to uh, put more more in here so if you notice it starts to get thick so one of the ways that you can kind of cheat that through is, is pour your reducer right through there because that'll filter out all that other stuff too and it'll help thin out your, your layer there and then we'll check for consistency these cups hold uh, about 13 is they're supposed to be 13 and a half ounce cups you can technically just put more you know but they, they're supposed to be like what's called a 13 and a half ounce cup okay that's a little bit little bit thicker than I want so I'm gonna add a little bit more reducer to it and then we should be good to go yeah that's nice So it'll be going back in here in the trunk. I got it all kill messed up. And uh, let's check it out. There's all my tripods. There it is, there's the tank. It's a nice candy blue. You can kind of see in, in the video, you know, videos and pictures never really show you everything, but yeah, it's a Vixen Air system. I, I showed it in another video with uh, eight valves, you know, two per, per corner. Uh, they're half inch line. So it's really fast. Honestly, I would do three eighths size next time because this is like, it's hydraulics. It's so fast. It's kind of almost funny, but uh, I'll put in the tank in, in in the trunk, and then it'll be good to go. I just got to put some screws on on the on the pumps there. But besides that, it's all nice. Look at that. That was painted in my backyard. I could buff it out and make it a little bit smoother, but it looks like a factory finish kind of deal, and you're not going to see it. It's going to be behind the glass anyway. So, but yeah, two coats of clear, two coats of candy, one coat of ground coat. 
And there it is. I did all this for under two grand, I think. I think the whole setup was about 1,500 bucks. So it's pretty reasonable. And that includes my bags, my mounts, my lines, everything, and all these valves. And I don't think it counts my paint, but you know, I've painted it myself. So anyway, tell me what you think. Hope you like my channel.